Man, I was so excited to have a different holiday season this year after my divorce and I bought my own tree and decorated it and tried to get excited for Christmas and I was doing okay and then after I decorated I sat down and immediately started bawling. Tis the season to be jolly and joyous. For many families with children, Christmas is a wonderful time of year full of laughter, joy, and good memories. That one day a year helps to wash down the obscene amounts of stress, anxiety, and secretive resentment towards all of our extended families. And for the single divorced woman in her 30s, you can definitely take away the laughter, joy, and good memories. If you ask me, and I know you probably didn't, it wouldn't surprise me if this woman thought she'd be in another relationship just in time for the unlimited number of Taylor Swift Christmas covers that pollute our radio airwaves. But what she didn't realize was that Christmas is an insanely stressful time of year and there isn't a self-respecting man alive who is willing to deal with the baggage of a single divorced woman, especially when he's trying to survive the Yuletide season without challenging the mall Santa to a brawl outside Macy's. Feeling super lonely and missing all the traditions that I used to have. Um, and trying to figure out how to move on and how to have new traditions and new make new memories and just live my life in a way that doesn't feel sad all the time. Um, hopefully this season will be different, but we'll see. Who are you talking at? You know, I hate to break it to you, toots, but maybe you should have thought about that before deciding to go on a healing journey to find your most pure, true, and authentic self. Here's the thing about traditions. You kind of sort of need a family or a community in order to make them a thing. Without those, you pretty much just have a whole bunch of meaningless quirks that you use to try to make yourself feel special. But more importantly, what in the name of the effervescent fingernails of the intergalactic space god Globachard, all hail his glory, possessed you to go out and buy a boxed wine ornament for your tree? Did you have that before you got married or did you buy it to remind yourself that your life will forever be a meaningless husk of an existence. That just seems kind of depressing, but I'm genuinely curious. What do you think, guys? Why did she decide to invest in such a terrible idea? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. There are so many people in this world who talk about midlife crisis, midlife, when they see like a 40 year old woman who gets a divorce and is starting to like live on her own, all of a sudden they're like, wow, she's really having a midlife crisis, blah, blah, blah. And actually what's happened is she had a 20 something year old crisis. She thought, oh my God, my eggs, my eggs, like what the fuck one's ever going to want me. Remember. Your biological clock is ticking. You're trying to be snarky, but you're not completely wrong. That's because young women, when they are at peak fertility, are supposed to find a mate and have kids. You are desperate to have kids because it's literally hardwired into your genetic code. And because you have the IQ of your average sewer rat, no offense to any sewer rats in the audience, you decided to shack up with the closest jag off you could find instead of trying to find the most suitable mate. The midlife Christ comes in after your ovaries have about as much use as a rusted out Toyota Camry. No offense to any Toyota Camrys in the audience, of course. You decided that society cheated you out of a life, so your only recourse was to get a divorce and get back onto the dating market. And sure, you're having minimal success because drunk college students are using your brine tunnel of pickled loneliness for practice, but at the end of the day, you're still going to bed alone and have nobody to support you. But that won't stop you from fooling yourself into thinking that someone out there wants a washed up old hag who's going through an obvious midlife crisis. I know it, your family knows it, dogs know it. Rushed into marriage a little bit too fast. And then when she was 40, after 10, 15, 20 years of marriage, she realized, oh, this shit only serves one of us and it sure isn't me. What did you expect? So raising your kids held no benefit for you. Well, gee whiz woman, color me shocked. It's almost as if your priorities change when you have kids. Who would have thunk that when you pooped out a few spawn, your life would change forever since you're ultimately responsible for the safety and well-being of the carriers of your genetic code. But you are so bitter and resentful towards your own children that when it comes to the subject, all you can focus on is how your marriage made you feel and not how it affected 
your children. But even with all of that said, how much you guys want to bet that her online dating profiles claim that her children will always be your number one priority and the dude she wants to bone will have to be okay with that? Put me down for 50 intergalactic space bucks. I'm good for it, I swear. She wakes up and then starts to live her life on her own terms forage a path of her own in this world. It's not a midlife crisis. It's a coming back to who the f you are after you realize the way the world wants you to go only serves men. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? What? No, there's not much that serves men. If anything, society has been modified to serve you. You have the complete backing of social media, big tech, the government, the court system, multi-billion dollar corporations, and the legacy media. Yet despite all of this magical support, you're gonna sit there and somehow say you're still oppressed by men? That sounds awfully convenient if you ask me, but I guess there's no limit to whatever horse crap you'll feed yourself so you can sleep better at night when you're alone in your apartment. You can go ahead and try to fool us into thinking thinking otherwise, but we all know the truth. You made a bunch of terrible life decisions, and instead of reflecting and owning up to them, you're just gonna claim that you're on a new journey of self-discovery, but all we're discovering is an old wretch who harbors nothing but hate and bitterness because of her poor life choices. On a scale of 1 to 10, how close am I? You know what has been happening lately? A lot. No, and mm. I don't care. I made a man. He slides in my DMs. He runs into me at a place. It doesn't matter. He's nice and tall, dark, caramel, light skin, whatever comes my way at the time. But beautiful, tall. Mm. Get to talking. Great job. Sounds like they have great morals. Funny. Did I mention cute and tall? And then you get to questioning them. So how old are you? Oh, I'm 24. I'm 25. Oh, poor you. Yeah, your luck is just god awful. You're sitting there complaining that dudes are shooting their shot and hitting on you despite them unknowingly lowering their standards to do so. They tick a lot of your meaningless boxes and you are still butthurt over the notion that they're younger than you? We can all tell from the way you handle yourself and your entitled facial expressions that you should consider yourself lucky that anybody talks to you at all. I mean, I almost feel bad for those guys who talk to you because they clearly have no idea what they're getting themselves into, but then again, they're probably drunk and don't know any better so I'm willing to give them a pass however I guess I can understand your trepidation to want to talk to these young men after all you don't want to be seen as a predator to the entire planet right <laughs> oh wait geez I'm sorry I almost completely forgot that's only a thing when dudes do it I'm sorry legit my mistake why are the young ones out here killing it and the ones that are in their 30s that are up here with the 30 year olds or even 29 I just not it I'm about to get I'm about to be a cougar day and night she talks each word more useless than the next Woman, the reason why you can't get a dude your age is simple. The men that you want don't find you attractive in any capacity. The whole lack of fertility point notwithstanding, you are a solid four and five six on your best possible day in the looks department, and you have alimony check written all over your forehead. There isn't a self-respecting man alive that's gonna take you seriously. You are entitled, combative, and unable to submit to a man's leadership. However, younger, more attractive women will most likely give him the peace and the trust that he deserves. Desires. So woman, my advice to you is to take what you can get because you're not getting any younger And the truth is that once your looks fade which rest assured they most certainly will Nobody is gonna want you even as a cougar those young men who have game are already well on their way to having younger More attractive and worthwhile women in their lives. I know you don't want to face the music sugar, but you had your chance You blew it fish I've been a single mom for three years. I was betrayed by my ex-husband four and a half years ago, and these are some of my dating advice tips. Should be interesting. Be okay going on a lot of first dates. It's okay to not have a second, third, my first like six to nine months of being in the dating world. Uh, you know, girls gotta eat. I honestly viewed it a lot as like a networking opportunity, more so than like, oh, I'm out to find my next ex-husband. I just moved back to my hometown. I was getting reacquainted, just started a business. And honestly, the dating world has changed so much. 
when I was 20 and... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I'm understanding you correctly, your first piece of advice to single moms out there is to just use men for dinner dates and to network with them for your business. Yeah, I'm sure the men who are interested in dating you for God only knows why, we're totally cool with this. I know when I take a woman out, my first instinct is to find out more about that LLC she started last year but never got off the ground. That within itself is totally worth the price of a chimichanga platter. And if you ever want to know why modern dating has been flushed down the toilet, you need only look at women like this. Men don't feel like wasting a bunch of money for an out-of-touch single mother who's only using them for food or to advance their pointless paper business. We kind of find both of those to be rather insulting. Dating the man that I married, there were no dating apps. I'm just kind of adjusting to how men treat women now in this day and age. Between what I have been through and what I've seen other people experience, only date people that you know through other people. Especially if you have trust issues and you've been betrayed. They betrayed me, they didn't keep their promise, they tricked me and I don't care anymore. Call me old fashioned, but I've always been at the school that you should probably work on your trauma and trust issues before diving back into the dating market. It's an unreasonable ask to assume that a man is going to allow you into his life when you have baggage you never fully worked through and just expect him to be okay with that. And this goes double for men who have had trauma themselves and have gone through the excruciating work of putting those issues to bed. And only dating people who are within your social circles might not be as smart as you think. Let's say the date goes south, and what's to stop the guy from telling everybody about your problems? Next thing you know, your entire social circle is now involved with your dirty laundry, and you have egg all over your face to go alongside that goop you just rubbed in. So maybe you should just sit out dating in its entirety until you've figured out your crap first. But who am I kidding? You have mouths to feed, so naturally you need a guy to help you do that. My bad, crazy lady. I forgot. And last but not least, keep your relationship off of social media. 100%, especially if you have not finished your divorce, keep your life in general off of social media until your divorce is final, but that's a whole other topic. Keeping your newfound relationships private is honestly one of the biggest keys to them being successful because anytime someone finds out that you're dating their ex, the ex seems to enter back into the picture or if you have an ex and they are upset that you left them, that's gonna be a whole issue. So just be okay with only your close friends. And even then, they don't really need to know either because no one is quicker to judge a man than your best friend who is now competing for your attention with him. Wow, that's, that's, that's fantastic work, man. You have, the, you have the wisdom of a six or 7,000 year old man. That's fantastic. We don't have to fill up the whole blackboard after all. Okay, that seems oddly specific. There are plenty of jealous exes out there, that's for sure, but if that was the case, why would you be posting anything on social media at all? If you're a single mother and you have an ex that's virtually stalking you online, then why would you post anything, let alone post about your love life? But here's a bigger question. If you are truly paranoid about your ex finding out about who you're dating, then why the hell would you be calling him out on a social media platform that he's most likely following? You do realize he's gonna see this right and what's to stop him from causing you more grief the fact is you're not giving out dating advice at all you're tailoring your dating experiences and giving yourself advice based on your incredibly specific circumstances so maybe you should take a play out of your own playbook and give social media posting a rest altogether because your advice is just like your love life it's dead on arrival and completely worthless And that's gonna do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. As always, if you find that my particular brand of comedy is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell so we can give the good old fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for checking out the new video and until next time, peace out, homies.